Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. So, uh, all right. Uh, I hope you have gone through the yesterday's uh, session. I've gone through the code uh, that we have done. I have not shared the code yet. Uh, that will be done today. Uh, but uh, if you have gone through the video, uh, I hope you understood there are certain things that we have to do for creating application and how we link uh, the application from uh, the back end that is at the models to bring the data at the front end. Right. So those things we saw. Now, there can be other ways uh, in which we deal with an application. Right. And uh, uh, and one such way is called as API. All right. So this is an open session of uh, week six where we uh, studied about what an API is. OK, so I'll just give you a brief of what exactly is an API and uh, how are we doing it uh, uh, programmatically using the, uh, you know, the extension of Flask that is called as Flask RESTful. OK, so. So let us understand what API is. Just let me open the folder. Give me a minute. Okay, so this is the folder where we'll, we will be coding. Okay, I'll just quickly open paint so that I give you an idea of uh, what exactly we are doing. Okay. Pixel. Okay, so uh, what exactly is an API? When I say API, it, first it stands for Application Programming Interface. But why do we need something like that? So we have an application here. I mean, there is this backend that uh, we are working at, right? Flask. So that is done in Flask. All right. And uh, there is this front end where, uh, where everything that we are doing is available, which is browser. Right. So there is an exchange between data between browser and Flask, right? So this is backend and this is front end. So there is an exchange of data between backend and frontend. And this is fine, right? So uh, this, this is my controller where my business logic stays, right? And this is just a view where I see uh, the data, uh, data as in, in, a, in a more interactive way, I can interact with this. So uh, that, that is the reason I'm giving both sides that arrow, right? So data can travel either, either way. So that is fine. This is till this point we are clear, but then why do we need something like API? All right, so API, let me give you a scenario where uh, we are, uh, uh, where there is an issue. Okay, so we have created Flask and we have created controller and we are sending some data to the browser with the help of uh, Flask, right, uh, uh, Jinja. So what are we using? Render template, right? So this is a very prominent method that we are using till now, render template. All right, so this is used to render, tell the name of which template that we are going to render and also give the data, right? So the data is going from my controller to my browser. All right, now what my question at this point is, is browser the only way to interact with an application? Right. Is it the only way? So for example, when you're talking about, let's say our Google meet application or Gmail application. So the one that we use on our laptop is actually a web application. Okay. But the one that you're using in your cell phones, it is, it is an embedded application, right? Or it is an application application that you have installed, right? Gmail is installed in your app phone. But you can see the data is consistent. I mean, when you see mail on a laptop and when you see the mail, your mail or your meeting links or whatever your chat are uh, in the G space or in the G chat, whatever you see are in our consistent, right? Consistent. I mean, if you text one person, so there is some other person, you text from web and you text from cell phone. The person will receive the same text. 
Now the same person receives the exact same text what you have sent. How are two different applications, one that is having a completely different platform, that is uh, Android or Apple or any other uh, Windows, Right, so it is an application that is installed in your phone. Okay, and then there is an application that is installed, not actually installed, it is running on your browser. So it can be Chrome or anything. Right, how are these two applications connecting to same backend? Right, the same backend, uh, same controller that we are writing. With okay, this is possible with Flask. What about this? Okay. So this is where, and do you think that uh, when I when I send or retrieve data from here to the browser, I need to make certain configuration that are relevant only to the browser. Similarly, I'll have to make certain configurations that are relevant only to the, the platform that I'm using. For example, I'm installing a Gmail application. Let's say, I don't know if it is there, but I'm installing an application in my computer. Uh, okay, let's create our computer here. So if I'm installing my uh, this Gmail application in my computer, the way of interacting, the way of integrating these two again in the backend with the application is different, right? So you can see that the, the moment the platform changes, the application also changes. The way of application getting embedded also changes, right? But then we only have Flash at this point. How do we connect to this platform that is Android? Or iOS, Windows, or how do we connect to an application entirely applica different application installed in your system, right? Such applications are called as embedded ones or standalone, right? So this is where what you need to do is you need to generalize the data that is remove this component of Flask actually. I mean, remove the question of dealing with only web application and open your you know, uh, uh, integration with all types of application, right? And for that, we cannot say, I will say, uh, I mean, I'll retrieve data in only one format, right? So what I mean to say with this is, when my backend is connected to the browser, what will, what is the general format of data that I receive in? How do I view data in the form of HTML files, right? Because so, this so is what we are, so, uh, we are just focusing on uh, how, where we can, uh, how do, do the cross platform applications work? Yeah. Right. Right. So this, uh, the browser that, I mean, the data that is till now that we were sending to the front end was uh, retrieved, uh, rendered and shown to us only in the form of HTML file, but HTML do not work in your, uh, phone. Right. I mean, not in the browser, but the application that you see, they are dot APK files, right? installed in your uh, system, uh, computer, phone system, mobile system. In this uh, case, in case of an uh, application that is working on, on your system, that is computer, it is .exe file or any other similar uh, syntax, uh, sorry, extension, right? So how do you make this configuration with, I mean, same backend, but different way of uh, representing the data, right? So basically what I'm trying to say here is, let us, uh, go some more down. So you have one controller, one controller or one backend, right? But then you have different way in which you can uh, uh, show this data. So there are different interfaces or front end, right? And with that, the way these front end render or show data is also different. So in case of web, it is HTML. In case of uh, in case of EXE, it is actually the uh, the Windows loop, right? It is the Windows loop, the uh, you know application getting rendered and running on the loop, all right. And in case of .dot apk, it is again similar thing to what we have in EXE, but uh, something that is related to cell phones only. Okay. So what do what you if, mean by Windows loop? Uh, don't worry about this. Uh, these are how applications run on Windows. Okay. So, so these are what you, what I'm trying to say here is these are different ways of representing the same data. So how will you decide in what format should I send data to this, this, and this? How should I send data? What should be the format? 
So in this way, what we do is we find a generalized way of sending data, a generalized way of sending data, which every other application or every other interface or every other platform understands and renders it according to its own will. All right. If I have HTML sent, maybe web application will uh, be able to do it. But what about TX? It won't be. And what about dot APK? It won't be able to do it. Uh, that is render. Okay. What if I send something that is uh, relevant to EXE, but then what about the other two? So what we do is we send data in a generalized format and then tell the application themselves to work with the data and render your own content. Right? So what are we trying to do? We are trying to connect backend with different types of frontends in a more generalized way. Right? And this generalized form of uh, connection between the back end and front end is what is done by APIs. And that is the reason you're calling it application programming interface. Okay. So these APIs are actually the one that are exposed by the controller. So it does not say, that, okay, I'm sending HTML file. It does not say I'm sending a windows.loop file. It does not say I'm sending an APK relevant file. It does not say that. It says that this is the data, a raw data that I'm sending. Okay, you take it and then format it according to your will. If it is a web browser, make it an HTML and render it. If it is an API related, uh, sorry, if it is an APK related, uh, render it according to your device and, uh, sorry, configure it according to your device and render it, right? So what is this exposure of data? This exposure of data is what is called as API or we also call this as resource. Okay, because we, basically this, data or this API that are being exposed are acting as resources for the front ends, different front end, right? So what are we saying? We at the back end, instead of using Flask and always rendering in HTML, we render a raw data, only the raw data. Okay. We expose only the raw data. Okay. And then the, whatever I want to connect it with, whether it is a web application, whether it is an embedded application, whether it is a mobile application, or Android application, the application, uh, the interface on the front end that is mobile or this and that or web, it will parse this raw data according to its uh, interface and uh, displays it. Okay. In this way, what you do in this way, you bring a very good differentiation and also uh, uh, bring about this integration, right? Which I'm, uh, which I've written here, this one. Okay. So there is one backend and then there are different devices that connect to same database. What is this ensuring? The consistency that we see in today's application, right? So Gmail uh, working on browser, Gmail working in your phone and Gmail working in your iOS anywhere gives you the same consistent data because it could connect with same database, right? Uh, it's, excuse me, one question or clarification. Yeah. So you, even on the mobile phone, you could have the same application work on a browser or as a native application, right? As a native application, that's what we are saying. So okay. if it is a browser, we don't have to worry about the so we, uh, same thing can be used. Whatever is being built yes, for a regular yeah. browser. Right. If it is a browser, then it is still the web application. Right. Yeah. So in, in the electron apps, they act as browsers, right? They are different, right? They are not native. Which one? The electron apps. Electron apps. I'm not electron, really sure about this. electron JS apps. Okay. So we are not talking about those, right? Is it a is it a JS library? Like uh, uh, VS Code and all these uh, other applications work on that, but they use okay okay yeah. So VS Code is, is an embedded application that run on your system. Hmm. It's an embedded application. You might see that if you open the VS Code folder, you'll see there is a uh, you know .dot exe file for VS Code. Okay. All right. So what am I trying to say? Are you getting, so what are we trying to do here? We are trying to generalize the data Excuse that are backend sends. Are they embedded applications or embedded. native? I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, see, I think there's a difference between embedded application and native application, right? So VS code Seven. and all those are uh, not embedded applications, but native applications. Okay. What is the, uh, what is an embedded application? Embedded is something that's, let's say in your phone, it is already there. I mean, it's, it could be at the OS level, it could be, right? Whereas See, native, native, native application is where your application that you're de developing is using 
native apis of the os okay so i think i think see there there is you know there are you cannot completely segregate out because when i say an embedded application okay. generally an embedded application are the ones that focus on only one task at a time okay for example calculator that is already there in your system the way you are saying but calculator has only one task to do it does not do anything else that is the reason we call it embedded okay, okay so, so i mean we cannot okay, clearly differentiate no no i i understood now okay because your classification is a little different than what i'm uh, used to and that's okay yeah, yeah okay but yeah i'm not saying that what i'm saying is only correct right because there can no, be no, i just wanted problem. a clarification because my understanding was different so okay Thanks. fine so i mean yeah so uh, let us okay let us not go into details of what is an embedded and stand alone for example i'm just saying that your uh, i mean the differentiation here is only about an application that is running on browser an application that is running on your cell phone an application running on your windows or uh, system mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what okay, okay. so you. these are three different platforms that we have and uh, we want to connect to same backend right so how do we do that in that case the one thing to understand is we cannot have one way of interfacing one way of integration right till now uh, our focus was only web application all right so in web application we know that okay the 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 data that we are going to get is anyway shown on the browser so why not have it uh, sent as html only that is the reason we were rendering html always okay but now we are moving one step ahead and we are saying that uh, okay maybe i want to run this data into a different uh, platform altogether but then the html won't work so can you give me a data that is more raw and then i can modify it according to my will right this is one use case what is the other use case what is the other scenario let us see that for example we have google maps all right we have google maps so google maps has has done a very good uh, you know uh, progress or establishment in terms of creating maps okay the maps created by google maps are done on you know by the satellite imaging and they have done quite a lot uh, uh, you know quite a lot of research on how to create maps uh, for different cities every every place on the earth and it shows a very good uh, very uh, close to uh, what we call very accurate uh, images or maps of a particular place all right for example i want to create an application okay that you that also shows maps okay i want to create an application now we are not talking about whether it is an embedded application or this let's say this is a web application i want to create and let's say we are talking about web application google map okay both are web application okay now i want to create a application i don't know the name of it let's say we'll keep the name later but it uses maps okay this is where i want to show its users maps of any places of india okay will it be easier okay what will be the easier to do same research was what google did or take the same data what google is providing take the same data from google right so uh, instead of doing everything what google did specifically for the maps it is way easier and way scalable to get the data from google maps also i mean google maps directly and use this data to show the same map all right but the problem is how do i get this data because google map is showing the data on map right uh, like this something like india so it is showing the data here it is already shown on the screen how do i take this data and parse it right the other way would be i ask data google google maps to give me a very raw data raw data and i will integrate that data into my application and get the same map okay so what are we doing we are trying to connect two different two different application with the help of this raw data right i'm taking a service that the google maps provide in the form of raw data and use it using it in my own application right this is another use case of api application programming interface so you are interfacing two different application and taking functionalities this is what the modern applications like swiggy and zomato do okay so we order food we give the location of you know our location their location and things like that uber ola how are they getting maps they are all uh, all using google maps api all right so what is google map doing along with its own interface it also exposes uh resources which are raw so the swiki uses that raw resources uh interfaces according to its own will and then shows it 
Okay, so you can see that there is a difference between Google Maps shown by Google and the map shown by Swiki, right? It is uh, what we call modified according to its own, uh, you know, what are things important and not important, right? But the data that is coming from uh, uh, the Google Map is raw data, right? So basically, what are we doing? We are connecting two different applications, doesn't matter what is their platform, and linking the data here and there. So basically, what is this application doing? This application is actually borrowing a functionality, right? Borrowing a functionality from Google Maps. This borrowing and lending functionality is also what is called as API. Okay. Okay. So did the, does that make sense? I hope you're getting what the API is. Any doubt? Sir, in that case, can we say that our application is also acting as an API? Which one? Like whatever the Flask application we create. No, currently not. Why? Because uh, the data that we are sending is only one way sending, right? I'm, I can only send it to HTML. I can create a uh, web application. It is basically what we have done now has created backend and stated that there can be only one front end to it. That is browser. Okay. Right. So, so the data is direct. Sorry. Yeah. So we have to explicitly like write some sort of a code that yes. creates some sort of an API. Yes. So I mean, why why is that explicit code writing is required? Because see, you have created a backend and the data that you are sending to the front end can only be rendered via HTML, not anything else. So there is no question of raw data. Can you explicitly say this is my raw data? Right. And why, why am I saying raw data? I mean, you can say that, okay, the return that I've done can be a list. But where are you rendering it? On an HTML page only, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but what do I want? I want a raw data that can be very explicitly, you know, seen and analyzed. Okay, and generally that raw data is what is called as JSON. Okay, so week six content, you have heard about this term a lot of times, right? JSON. What is this JSON? This is a very similar format uh, to a dictionary, a Python dictionary or a JavaScript object, right? I mean, it is more closer to JavaScript ob object. That is the reason the full form for JSON is JavaScript object notation. Okay. So, I mean, when we learn JavaScript, we'll have a very good, very important uh, data structure in JavaScript called as object, right? And the way objects are written is what is JSON. Okay. Why are we saying, uh, why are we taking this data in JSON? It becomes very easier to analyze and uh, mold that data into whatever interface we want. Then doesn't matter whether it's a web, uh, uh, the Windows application or a system application or a mobile application, right? So, I mean, uh, let me go back to some more part of it. Okay, so currently, let's say we have created uh, two models, right? So uh, the material model, okay, and item model, okay, this, model we have created an interface which can only work on web browser what if i want to create an embedded application or let's say a mobile application for this i would need this data but then i cannot work into a mobile application with htmls right rendered or templates doesn't matter what but html will not work in my mobile application so how do i need this data how do i parse this data I should have a data in very raw format. So what are we getting actually material, right? So let's say I can have something like this one, then a dictionary material underscore one. Okay. Which is again a dictionary, which gives me material name. And uh, I think there was only material name, right? So you can see that this data, now I can go to any stage of the data and retrieve whatever I want. Okay, and therefore the rawest format of data that we will then send from one place to the other doesn't matter what the plot platform is, doesn't matter what the application is, this raw format is now JSON. All right, so instead of sending rendered HTML, instead of sending uh, the data on the uh, Windows application, instead of sending data on the mobile application, you just transfer raw data here and there, right? Now what the application wants to do with that data is something that application will decide. All right. So there are two, two phases of an API, exposing an API and working, I mean, retrieving the data and working with an API. Okay. This is something that we won't see at this point, but we will see how to expose data. 
okay is this clear sir one question sir hmm. sir now presently uh, whatever we have done it is in db um, uh, whatever database what is that format uh, actually what format it is stored sir in db browser uh, it is a it is a structured database no whether if it is similar to json what is the name given to it like no, we no, no. Are is... on the uh, controller we are using it as a uh, dictionary only no sir it's a dictionary of dictionaries no 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 why it is an object we are retrieving object. objects okay all right and why are we retrieving objects because we are working with python if there is a different language then we would do it in a different way so you cannot say i mean the that's what so the data that we are using you cannot decide the type of data in the way you are using you will decide the type of data in the form it is going to the uh, the you know users right exposing so in the database that we have created where what do you think is the form of data it is an rdbms dbms it is a relational database that you have created all right how are we using in the form of objects and classes okay 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 sir okay similar to that now the if we create api that is if we create a resources for an application what we will do we will create json the data will go to and fro in the form of json but how is this json converted into more relevant form for this application is something that application will decide okay but the ex data will be exposed only in the form of json and that is intuitive i mean see for example if you want me to use data in the way that my application want i should get the rawest form of data right because then again to scrap the data from uh, already given form it will be very it will be like a double thing that i'm doing right scrapping the data parsing the data then making it raw and then using it according to my need are you getting this yes sir. can you repeat what you said like so where is the data, the data stored uh, yeah so for example till now what do we have we have backend created in flask how is flask giving the data in the form of html right for example i want to use this data into a mobile application let me write it here mobile application what will i have to do i have to will have to pass this html right i'll have to retrieve data from this html create a data dump at my end and then use it according to my will right but if you remove this thing then what do you get you get a raw data which can be directly used into application so this is this is what we have now this is what we will try to do now okay this is what we have till now till back end and everything but now we are more focused into creating raw data rather than rendering it all right till now there was no question of using any other interface but now we are talking about you know expanding it to other interfaces getting yeah so where the data is stored data will still be stored in the db that we have created okay from there it so will go to you, controller so and from there it will be sent as raw sir in a uh, back end to html then you said saying that uh, we were having in the browser right mm -hmm. so like uh, and we are we are going to now see how uh, we if we send this raw data and how we'll handle that if no, that no we won't be the handling the data at this point we will just see how to send raw data mm -hmm. see okay what is what is the flow uh, we retrieve data so there is db there is db we retrieve data into controller right and we do something with that data and we whatever things that we uh, calculated or uh, you know analyzed in the controller that is sent into the html with the form of in the form of render template right render template and then jinja inside the html does the job for us this is what is happening now what we are doing we are retrieving data based from the db right in we will do the same thing in the controller but now instead of rendering this we are sending the raw data okay here only web browser was able to you know work with it here anybody can work this is the difference all right so how to do this is what we are going to study today all right how to actually use this data we will see sometime later
Are you getting this thing? Yeah, understood. Okay, so here there was no question of sending and retrieving because HTML was sent, HTML was retrieved, and HTML was rendered. Web application was this. But now we are although although we are creating web application only, it is it is something that the backend has. But then later on we can decide on whether to use it for web, whether to use it for uh, uh, Windows application, iOS application, or whether to use this for phone application, right? So that independence we have to provide. And therefore the actual, so API simply put the process of making the data raw is what is API. Okay. All right. So I hope you understood whatever I've written here. I'll share this, uh, this particular page also. Let us now yeah. move on to the code. So you said that the exposure of data is what is the API? Yes. Right. And then you said that we, there are two stages of API, exposing the data and working with an API. And we will, we won't be looking at the working with the API stage, right? No, no. Working as in using that data, retrieving that data. So okay. see, uh, I have created a controller that sends raw data, that exposes raw data. Okay. Again, it yeah. will have that uh, endpoints and uh, everything. So every data will now be available at every, uh, with, with a URL. Okay. So you go to that URL and you get the data in the raw format. This is what is called as resource URL. Okay. So we will create URL and we will, with that URL, we will uh, send or retrieve data. Okay. I mean, yeah, okay. we can send data also. So, right. we, so yeah. we are going to look at both exposing the data and retrieving the data, but like, we, were, we are going to look at how do you retrieve data okay in the form of json how do you add so all the things right we will be seeing crud but in the application that we created we had an interface right web browser was the interface now there won't be any interface okay so how do you how do you make this uh, transactions with the help of raw data okay there will be request response Okay, but the request will be original request the way we used to send. What used to be the response till now? HTML. But what will be the response in, in case of API? A raw data, a feedback sent in the form of JSON. Okay, I mean, yeah, so these are put into words. Let us get into the code and then you will get it more. Okay, but now at this point, you just need to understand superficially what is API doing. Okay. I mean, what exactly I'm saying with, you know, request URL, resource URL, how are we retrieving data? What, how are we sending data is something that will be very clear when we go into the code. Okay. Clear, but yes, we will be using the same database, same database as in same file, same models I'll uh, use. And uh, if I go into configuration, then I think it will confuse. So I'll use the same models, recreate the database, new database for API add some data and then we'll work on the code. Okay. That is what we're going to do. All right. Any, uh, is this clear? Any issues till this point? So, so, so we should copy the files to a new folder, right? Or copy the, which files? The files which we are working uh, with. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, yeah. So you can follow along. I'll do it from the scratch. I'll just uh, save it. API.png. Okay, so we will go to this week six folder and uh, uh, we will do the tradition opening CMD and opening VS code. Okay, so I need to worry about all these things. Just make sure you have Flask RESTful. Okay, just taking as a command. All right. We have to install Flask RESTful. How do we do it? Pip install Flask RESTful. So are you installing on the computer or on? Oh, I have not shared the screen. Is it? No, so screen is shared. No, sir, on the environment, like, are you doing it? No, no, no. I am not doing it in the virtual environment. I have not created one. 
okay so i don't want to unnecessarily create it just you can continue with i, I mean you can create virtual environment but you can continue with uh, doing it in your system as well no issues okay sir i think it should be installed only but all right yeah it is there so if it is uh, i mean you'll have to install do it pip install flask less full and it will install it for you okay once that is done then we are good to go so what will i do i'll uh, also use the files that we were working with before that is this week file thing all right and what i need is this model okay and uh, that's all i just need model because we are working with the same uh, models we'll create a different database so we will need that also right so what i'll do i'll just create a new file called as uh, app dot py okay and then another file called as model dot py model dot py all right we won't need templates folder because now there is no question of html so templates folder is not required okay so let me go back to that also okay there is a folder yeah all right so we we got model.py i'll just copy things from there all right then uh, app.py we don't uh, really need what is the controllers and everything we don't need but we need some configuration all right so that configuration i'll open just let me open these two files here okay so what do we need exactly we will need first three to four lines of code okay so you open app.py and paste it here so you can see that i have just uh, used flask model because this is the same model that i will i'll be importing from okay we do not need this right we do not need render template because we are not working with html we do not need request because we are not working with form and we do not need redirect because there is no interface at all all right so we don't need all those things all right but now that we are importing things from model we'll need to write things in the model right and what do we write there uh, all the things that are there in the model uh, file okay so these two models correct because there is no interface at all. what happened i could hear my voice what happened all right you see we have two different files created but i hope everything of these files is understood okay there is nothing new that we have done we have created two models and in the application we have imported those uh, two model db and everything methods and classes configured the same uh, thing okay i'll just change the name of database all right so i'll write my api database just to be clear right that we are creating database for api okay so model will save this and we'll save this also now any issue till this point sir where did, did you make the change i just seen this nothing no change i just seen the name of uh, database that's all okay okay so whichever lines i copied you don't have to make any change anywhere why because we are still using the you know the same configuration of our database and we are still using the same way we use con we configure our database right so everything is there right now there will be some extra imports that i'm going to do because we'll be working with flask restful so those things will be import okay let me know if you are done till here excuse me can you just show the model.py once yeah so here you're not doing any references and other things no you are doing back reference yeah i am doing that but uh, we'll see if we need it we don't uh... no so in the exercise and all is this something that is expected of us or that all the integrity is maintained of the data which one in the exercise that has been given right the ga or aha uh -huh, okay uh, no you don't need this uh, okay whichever models are given to you uh, the thing i mean you can still do it without it, without them no no i know we can do it without that but is that the expectation No, no, no. Okay. So uh, we are we, the models that we have given. You can use uh, them as it is, 
and you don't have to have this extra things right i okay. have this because i was uh, explaining right even i can remove it from here but i just uh, you know, decided that's okay that's okay. sir so, uh, flask sql alchemy we have so i have to also install yes okay. yes 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 everything we'll have to install because uh, we need that uh, we need these things right sir so what was uh, that uh, pip install right. this same thing pip install flask sql alchemy okay it can store it for us ah simple simple right yes sir okay fine so i'll go back to our app.py and we'll write that uh, again at this another tradition if name equals to main I'm dot run and debug equals to two. We are anyway not going to use this much, but okay, fine. Huh? Right, so this is my app. Later on, I'll make changes so into. Someone this. is uh, speaking. Not my end. Yes, uh, so Narasimha, this is a, a good understanding. Okay, this is correct understanding. All right, thanks. Okay, fine. So, uh, all right. So now we'll make changes in the. So before we actually create the uh, APIs and everything, uh, let us also create the database, right? So how do we do that? We will go to our command prompt. We will open Python shell. We won't activate any uh, virtual environment because there is not any, right? then uh, from app import everything okay so you can expect an instance folder getting created right empty instance folder and then db dot create all okay so now you can expect the instance folder having a database with my api underscore db dot sql3 because that is what we have mentioned Okay, let us open this. Open database. Okay, it will be an empty database. Right, an empty database. Okay. All right, so just to make sure that we are retrieving correctly things, we will, I'll just add one, uh, you know, data here. Uh, let's add a material. I'll manually add it with the help of DB browser. Okay. So I'll do it this click here and you go here material plastic. Somehow I remember this name only. Okay. So plastic and then we'll save it. Okay. So right changes is actually the commit. All right. And then we don't need it at, anymore. Okay. Now let us uh, configure the API. Okay. So how do we do that? We'll import flask restful. So from flask restful import. There is something called as resource. There is something called as API. At this point, we'll import these two things. All right. Now you try to see the similarity in the code. Okay. So when I do from Flask import Flask, I create a Flask object. How is that done? From here. All right. Let us go to model. So when I import from Flask SQL Alchemy import SQL Alchemy, I create a DB object like this. Similarly. When I create a Flask RESTful, I mean, when I import from Flask RESTful resource and API, I'll create an API object. So how do I do that? I will just uh, write it uh, here. Uh, where should I write it? Here or there? Okay, here itself. Okay. So what will I do? I'll write API equals to, and how do we do that? API, that's all. Right? So you can see that Flask object, DB object, and API object created. All right. And... While these, uh, I mean, so this takes name, right? That it takes the module name. Here, I created uh, this thing, right? SQL Alchemy object. 
but actually it takes app as argument okay i mean what i'm saying is whenever you create something like db object you will pass app as the argument to it but here it will throw error why because there is no app defined in this module so that is the reason we simply defined it i mean we simply uh, create uh, this uh, object here and we initialize it here in line number 8 so you can see db dot any tab app so this is very much equivalent to uh, let me just write it in comment db equals to sql uh, alchemy and passing app as argument so this is equivalent to this all right whatever i have written here but the problem with that i hope you understood right so therefore to make sure that the app is passed as argument we use this init app method okay but if you see here api also take app as argument okay but in this case in this case the app is defined so i can simply put app as argument here okay did you get this so these are some coding uh, requirements that we have to initially do right so we are creating so for flask we are creating app object for from model we are creating db object and from fast restful we are creating api object all right later on we'll use all these things okay so all these objects that we are creating app sql alchemy and api they take argument app okay so here i when i'm creating api i put this argument as app that was not possible here therefore we did a, a work around what is that work around to use this db dot any tab method okay if i had a different module where Excuse i am storing me. all the apis yeah go ahead what does the db db dot any tab actually do it passes app as argument to this so this is what is this is what it is doing and what what does it do you have to configure two things right you have to configure i mean you want to make sure that the db applies on the same app object so the sql alchemy uh, sql alchemy method that we have created can't i just uh, sorry, import SQL. sql alchemy here in this file we can yeah we okay. can so say let's say if i have imported sql alchemy here huh. control c control p okay. right. if this was the case then what would would i have done i would have created this uh, db object like this db equals to or simply uh, if i put yeah. it this here correct okay so this api everything takes app as an object uh, sorry app as an argument that was not possible in models.py model that is the reason we did this ah okay okay right but in case of api it was there now if i have a different let's say i separated out models from my controllers right if i decide to separate out apis from my controllers what will i do i'll create a new file okay there i'll import flask as full api and things and i'll just create this without the argument and how will i do it in my app.py i'll do api.init app okay i hope you getting the the way of coding okay let's not confuse let us go with what we have at, at this point all right so i've created this api object which will take app as argument okay so that's all now the way we create models models are created by class right in model.py similarly we will be creating class resource all right so uh, api we create class okay now in the flask the same flask when we created controllers what was the first thing that we did we first defined routes right at the rate app dot route we first defined routes and later what we did we mapped view function with it right mapping of view function then we define functionality okay and then we return whatever we want right return template this was the procedure that we followed in flask right what we will do there is slight difference in flask as well i'll just write restful because it is understood that it is flask as well okay it took So in Flask RESTful, what we'll do is first we'll define class. Okay, in the class we'll define method. And one more thing, when I when I created that uh, routes, I also define what is the method, right? Get uh, methods equals to get post that we gave. So that was one thing. But here we will first create method, and that method are nothing but functions. 
I mean, don't worry. I'll just show you what I'm doing. I'm just showing you here. Okay, those methods are functions. Then there is functionality. Okay, then there is uh, a route defining of route. Okay, so you can see that there is a slight change in the sequence that we are following. Okay, I hope you understood this. Okay, let us try to understand what this is. Uh, okay, so so map view know. function. Sorry, didn't get. Like defined in Flask, we were like define defining the routes and app uh, that at the rate app and then the route. Then map view function, so like the function below it, right? That yes, that yes. Function. Define all material, all those things we did, right? Okay. So that is called as view function. The function that is mapped to a URL is called as view function. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Let me write this. Okay, so it was a controller also. Okay, now let us try to understand this sequence. Sequence from in line number 23. So what do we do? First, we create class. So this class actually uh, defines our API. Okay. So we, since I'm using the same model, I'll be creating a CRUD for material, CRUD for item, right? So this is what we can do. I'll do it for material, CRUD for material. All right. So for doing CRUD for material, what I'll do? Let's say I'll write material API. This is the class name. You can put anything you want, but it inherits a resource class. In model, what was inherited? DB dot model. Okay, but in here we will be uh, inheriting resource class. So this will come from here, right? This is some, something that I've imported before. Okay, that's all. So the class is created. Okay, so first one we are done. Now we will define method also function. So what does that mean? So in case of Flask, for example, in, in case of Flask, this thing, line number 21, what did we do? We created something like this, right? App dot route then slash home, let's say, then methods. Get post, all right? And then the view function define. Now this view function name can be at your will, right? You can do it, name it whatever you want, right? So let's say I can write home, okay? And then write functionality here. The functionality can be written here and then you do return. Okay, and what do we return generally? Render template. This is the general way in which a Flask, a Flask controller or Flask view function is defined. All right, so you, you keep, give the route, then you provide methods, then you clear, uh, I mean, give the name of the function and then you functionality you define and then you render a template. How do we do it in case of, uh, in case of uh, API? The method that we create should be the name of HTTP method. Okay, what do I mean by that? It has it should have name like get post put delete and so on. All these are HTTP verbs. Okay, all these are HTTP methods or verbs. You cannot name a function anything apart from this. Okay, you can either create a get function, post function, put function, and delete function. That was not the case here, right? I put, I mean, I created a home function. But in RESTful, you cannot create a anything else function. What is the assumption for are, are every case class? Sensitive? Excuse me, are these case sensitive? Yes, yes, yes. Has to be okay. small, and uh, lowercase get. Okay. Okay, that's the reason I've written in lowercase. Wherever there is uppercase, I've written an uppercase. Okay. All right. So these are, uh, you know, these material API and HTTP verbs. And we, we are, I mean, what do we generally do with an API? We do the CRUD functionality, right? So there can be CRUD functionality defined for one API resource. All right. So you can see that these are four uh, methods deal with the four CRUD functionalities, right? Get to uh, read, post to create, put to update and delete to delete. Okay. So it's, I mean, uh, a Flask application can have N number of methods but a material API, a API will have limited functions. And what is that limit? The number of HTTP verbs. Okay, generally we use CRUD. So generally you'll see there will be only four methods used for one class, right? So for example, if I want to create CRUD for item, what will I do? I'll create a new class, then new get put post and delete. Okay, is this clear? 
Okay, so let us now try to code more. I'll just uh, just uh, tab it and comment it. Okay, so this is my method get. Now there is one thing that I mean we have to keep in mind while doing uh, object oriented programming. If it is a method of a class, it should have self, right? So therefore, every method of uh, every method that we are creating in a class will have self as argument. Okay, and that is not argument I hope you know that. Okay, so get self, post self, put self, delete self. Self will be there. Okay, apart from that, if I want to send any argument, then you can put argument ID, name, whatever you want. Okay, but self has to be there. Then whatever we write here, this can be written here. This will be exactly the same. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll, so we are writing get, right? So let me query all items. Oh, sorry, all materials. And the core way of coding that is 100% uh, same, right? So material dot query dot get query dot all because I want all. Okay, material dot all materials equals to material dot query dot all. What will this retrieve? I should write here. This thing should be written here because I want to give you an idea of what exactly can come there. All right, what this will retrieve for me? Query object. Yes, uh, it will be a uh, yes query object, and it will be actually a list because we're querying everything, right? Material dot query dot all. So it will be list of object. It will be a list of objects. All right. Let us only talk about first object of it. All right. So uh, my object or my yes my object. I'll just write the first one. All materials. I'll show you for the first one and then we'll extend it to others. Okay, okay, let us not confuse. Let us do it from the beginning. Let us uh, return everything. Now the problem is here, had it been a you know a, a function, a flask function, what would I have done? Render template, write the template name and pass this there, right? In the template. But here, what are we going to return? What will be the return thing? The return will be a JSON. So we'll have to convert this into a JSON. Okay, so I mean, rest of the code will only uh, be used to convert the the data that we have retrieved from database into a JSON. All right. So what will I do? What is a JSON? It will be I mean very similar to a Python dictionary. So what will I just create an empty dictionary, right? So write my or all materials equals to an empty empty dictionary. Okay, all material empty dictionary. Then we'll what oh this is okay. This is list, this is again list. Okay, what I'll do? All materials object. All right, and this is all materials. This refers to the dictionary that will be returned as a JSON. Okay, this is one thing. Now what I have to do? I will have to uh, or I want to return the data that is there in each object. So what I'll do? I'll do a for loop. So for uh material in all material object okay then we'll create this a single uh, dictionary this material equals to an empty dictionary okay just bear with me we'll see what we are doing okay so there is uh, this material is actually a new object all right and along with that i'll also create uh, where should we create that okay we'll see so this material is an empty object. This will actually keep the uh, the you know attributes, all the columns of every object. So what do we have? We have ID and we have name, right? There are only two things uh, uh, as far as uh, there are there as far as the material is concerned. The material ID and material name. Only these two things are there. So we should have something like I mean the structure that I want to make for that dictionary is something like this. ID one name plastic plastic okay so you can see that it is uh, nothing but a Python dictionary right but it will be returned as a JSON and there is hardly any difference between I mean subtle difference between dictionary and JSON all right but there is no difference between JavaScript object and JSON 
okay so we'll see that or we'll understand that later but this is how i want this uh, you know the object to be written okay so what are we doing we are first creating an empty object all right and we are putting in the 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 entries of it right so what i'll do this is an empty object what will i do this underscore material how do you create a key in a dictionary something like this equals to material dot id right so i hope you understood this is my object so material dot id will give me the id of object and this material dot id will actually create a key named id and it will assign this value one two three whatever it is there to that key all right similarly i'll write this underscore material name and that has to be uh, provided with material dot name okay once we are done with this okay then what do we have to do we'll have to append this here all right now that appendment has to be done as one two three so how do i want to do that so all material should be another json that will give me something like this one json like this then one colon or something like like this material underscore one material underscore one key and this entire object as value okay so if there is a different material then we can write something like this i mean just i'll do control d okay so control d will copy the above line exactly down but then we can make changes something like this material 2 id 2 name aluminium okay so this is this should be the structure of my json all right now the only task that i need is to create this material 2 material 3 material 4 all right so i'll just use simple python for that all right so what i will do is let me create a variable i equals to 1 here i equals to 1 here all right and then once we are done with this what should we do we will add this complete this material to this all material dictionary okay so how do we do that uh, all materials all materials we are going to create a new key so that should be something like this right material underscore one material underscore two so we will do it something like this using the format string material underscore i because i is initiated with one all right all materials and then what should be the value this material that entire dictionary okay so you can see that in the for loop we have to do this till the for loop ends and once we are done with this then what do we return the entire all materials that we have created because so this i know is going to be sorry increment i yes increment and I. I forgot that and then we will increment i so i plus equals to 1 so these many things will happen in a for loop i mean this step is just to create the json the data we got in first step only all right but that the data that was in the in the object form list of object form has to be retrieved in the raw form so how do we do that with the help of this okay so some piece of code re required okay once this is done then we will so what is the next step so i hope you got the class you got the method function you got the functionality we have written till now right now then we'll finally will define route that is when will this get function trigger when will it trigger right what should be the url that triggers this get function all right so that is done with uh, this thing with this method api dot add underscore resource okay there we were just providing and add, add rate app dot route and providing the endpoint but here we'll provide resources differently okay we'll have to first provide for which class we are creating resource okay so what is the class material api is the class and then we will define the resource slash okay uh, all underscore materials okay but since it is an api it is uh, a convention that you also put slash api it will not do any harm because you can see it is a string hard coded string right you will get the data with this also but just we are following a convention that we say that okay 
it is an api right the user will understand okay that i'm uh, trying to get data from an api so what should i expect a json instead of html all right any doubt till this point sir we are creating a dictionary but then you are saying that there is a subtle difference between json and a dictionary like so are we creating a this json file or a dictionary we are creating dictionary because we are in python all right okay when you give it i mean when you try to return a json the flask restful will automatically convert that dictionary into json all right and the differences that mm -hmm. that that are there you will be able to see it okay currently we don't need to really worry about what are the differences we'll show it to you later or we'll give you the differences or i'll give you a resource which gives the differences but you don't really have to worry about the differences okay that's why i am very you know very easily interchanging between this json and dictionary json and dictionary okay i'm using these terms interchangeably it is 100% not correct but in 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 context of what we are doing now we don't need to do that okay okay so we are uh, creating a dictionary which is like json but we do not have to worry about the conversion because the flask converts the dictionary to json yes it will do that by itself right sir in the okay. for loop in the for loop the usage of i is required or not sorry din ge in the for loop above for loop i we are initiating i equal to 1 mm -hmm. is it necessary to to use i Does the for loop itself it will repeat the for loop, no? No. So this i is not there for incrementing the for loop. I mean, not I'm I'm not talking about while. See, I'm writing this right. I want this material to material three. For that, I'm using i. Okay, okay. It is. It depends on how do you want the output. How do you want to structure your JSON? Right. If I simply want to return JSON that is uh, this simple this right, then I can. I don't need to use it right. I mean, you can just use anything you want, index or whatever you want, and then I have it here, right? I just want this format, material underscore one. So where is this one coming from? It's coming from I, because you can see that I've used format string. Okay, so it is now creating a key called as material underscore one, whichever iteration it is, and then assigning the entire object because this material is an you know empty object which will fill which will be filled here in line number nineteen and twenty. Okay, now let us test this. Okay, so let me just come comment everything. Okay, the things that are not relevant to the code, we'll comment. Okay, we'll save this. All right, and then we'll run the application because app is anyway app, right? So we have to run this. So we'll exit this. The shell has to be exited because we're done. The only thing that we need for shell is to create the DB, right? Now we'll run this. Python app dot py. Let's see if there are any errors. Uh, we'll see when it comes. Now the thing is, now how do you test your API? Okay, you do, did this. Uh, when I created Flask app, I could very easily run it on my you know browser. How do I test API? Right? I am not I am not rendering anything. I am just rendering a JSON. How do I do that? So for that, we have something called as uh, the thing that you have used. Right? Documentation of API, Swagger UI. Right, so you have created. I mean, you have seen a week six uh, documentation in the form of question statement. Right, so there we are actually making query to the API. All right, the other way of doing doing that is using something called as Thunder Client. Okay, so I'll just click on Thunder Client, and you will see that it is. Uh, I mean, you don't need release notes, but you will see a new request. Now, how do you bring this Thunder Client here? It is again an extension of VS Code. So what you do is just download it. Uh, we go to extensions. Okay, and then type in Thunder Client. So the very first one, this uh, you know, the flash arrow that you flash sign that you get, right? So this is Thunder Client. See if it is installing. Okay, this one. So in the screencast, as I mentioned, Postman is it the same like this? Yes, yes, it is the same. But see, Postman it is an embedded application. Uh, where is it? Yes, you will have to install it, uh, download it, and things. So I am just uh, saving that time for you. You can use Thunder Client. 
completely same no change it is thunder client is an extension of vs code to test your apis whereas postman is itself an application that uh, helps you to test api sir i'm getting a message connection to server got closed server will not be restarted source python extension uh, where, what did you do that you're getting this i just installed thunder client okay then what after that nothing else it did, I, it did get installed or no i think it got installed it is showing that thunder icon is showing icon is showing right so you can just yeah. click on that icon okay you click on the icon do you see okay so you click on the icon do you see new, new request here hmm just click yes. on new request okay so this should be the interface that you see do you see this i mean this is for everyone do you see this after installing thunder client yes sir yes sir as of now your yes, screen sir. similar screen is available right so this is this comes when you click on new request so what does that mean is this interface allows you to make a request to any url with any method that is a very good advantage of using this in browser we could have uh, i mean when you go to url what is the default method get all right mm -hmm. when when you submit the form what is the method post you cannot use any other method from get and post in the browser but in case of uh, this apis you can use any method you want how do we do that so you see this get so you click the down arrow you'll see all the methods allowed mm -hmm. okay so when you click on post method and you write any url here it will make query to that url using post method right if i put put then and i click on send it will make query to this url with put method this is the best advantage and that is the reason we are using it for apis why because if you see the code our app.py the way we have created get we will create others also right post put delete how do we uh, how do we make a request to that particular url with particular method so this is how we do that right so this uh, what we call uh thunder client is giving us that uh, interface to so not only uh, give the http verb but also give the url and then make the request all right so let us now test so we created for get right so we'll click get here and we'll write the endpoint what will be the what is the url that we have created it will be http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 right slash api slash all material and this is how it works so if you go to ap uh, app.py you will see this so this is an endpoint right so endpoint always get appended with the base url so it's slash api slash all underscore materials so you see we have uh, where is this yeah so we have first written i'm not sure if this is visible to you i'm not able to increase the font size okay but this is what i've written http colon one uh, double slash 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 slash api slash all materials all right now when i do send let's see what happens what do you see here so this is where you see the response you see how well it has you know okay let me just copy it from here and show it here see this is how it has managed and this is json Okay, how do you make sure that it is JSON? You go to that same new request header. You see content type. You see it is application JSON. All right. Now I have JSON. I can use uh, wherever me. and however I want. Can you just show the JSON output once? The response. Ah, the response. Sorry. Uh, okay. So. Okay, material one, and then there is an object within that. Okay, but this is uh, so. If I have two materials, I mean mm. two objects, then there will be a square bracket, right? No, no, no. The, it will. Uh, we are see. We are adding uh, materials. I mean, we are adding new objects, right? If you oh, see okay, here, so we are not doing the get yet. Sorry. My endpoint is get, right? Yes, this is get. So if that if that table had multiple records, hmm. then this would this JSON will look different, right? 
no 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 it will be so this you will have something like this yes okay, let me use a comma no there will be material two and there will be there is, yeah there is a comma and then there is a scene that is we have created dictionary and we are adding into yes. that dictionary right so it will be something like this okay yes something this is like, like this. this only yes so you will have material underscore two then colon then other dictionary then you will have id equals to uh, sorry colon two comma name oh, okay colon. okay because that is the way you define the uh, model yes, yes. okay it, yeah so i mean what gets rendered is defined how are we uh, how we are returning the value okay okay so you can see that oh sorry not this uh, this will not be the case this will not be the case this is something like this right so you can see that you it will be uh, comma okay. separated so all the materials will add still one added extra bracket right oh, okay now it's fine okay and then this okay so you can you will see that you will exactly get the uh, you know uh, aluminium something like this okay let us test that how do we do that we'll manually add one material in the database okay added aluminium right changes this is important commit right and then we'll go back to our uh, new request okay and then again go to send see so we're making this request and we are this is the uh, structure that we have created so so in like in python terms it is just uh, like a sequence of nested dictionaries right yes nested dictionaries i mean uh, a, a dictionary of dictionaries not yeah. nested because then you won't you will keep on having you know one other the other second then third then so exactly nesting is not happening there is only one level of nesting every other uh, every element of the dictionary that i have created the outermost dictionary is again a dictionary that's all so it is a, uh, a dictionary of dictionaries okay let us yeah. test it once again i'll just add one more So right changes and we request right. So it is uh, doing the thing for us. Now the now the 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 best part is I'm not getting any HTML and things like that. I can very easily use this dictionary and retrieve whatever data I want and render it wherever I want. Doesn't matter if it is a web application, if it is you know .dot uh, .apk or .dot .exe. Okay, this is what is the advantage we have of API. Right, and what is what is this? This basically this endpoint. This is actually called as a resource URL because you when you get a, I mean when you do a get method on this URL, you get a JSON as output. All right, mostly even the feedback you will get as JSON only. We'll see that. Is this clear? Okay, and in the header we have already seen that the content type is application JSON. Cookies, results, and everything we don't need. Okay, clear. Shall we move ahead? Sir, in, in the headers, uh, how are you seeing uh, those values? Did you click on raw? I clicked on headers, not this header. This on the right. Okay. Response headers. So this header talks about a request header. This header talks about response header. Hmm. Okay, so you don't see anything here, but you'll see things here. Request header we don't need. Hmm. Okay, unless we are sending data. See, request header. What is the two forms in which we can send data? Either in the URL or in the request body, right? Hmm. So when you actually send data, you will see this body. All right, hmm. and you can see it says JSON content. What does that mean? Even the data that you are sending to the backend has to be sent as JSON. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll come to that. The next thing is that only. We, I mean, we have seen out of the crud. We have yeah, seen yeah. R, right? 
So in the header section that you in, on the left hand side, uh, that was the name of the client, right? The like the Thunder client, uh, which is sending that uh, the re request. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this header. Yes, yes, the user agent. Yes, user agent. So making me making use of Thunder client to actually uh, you know make a request to you a resource URL. So Thunder client can be take I mean can be considered as an application that want data from the other application that we have created. Right? Yeah. Okay. We can and see the moment I click on raw, it will become JSON. Uh, it's not showing here, but the raw by what it means, it is JSON. Okay, so we'll come to that. Okay, so if I go back to my app.py, you we have seen R, right? Now let us go to C part and do post. So the uh, the create we are going to do with the help of post. Okay, and when we create with the help of post, the data goes to server as request body. So we will now make use of this body, this thing. Okay. But we'll first we'll have to make we'll have to code for that. Okay. So let us go back to our app.py and start making changes. Sir, I just missed that. Like you, you said that uh, we do something and then it goes on request body. So when you send data with the post HTTP method, the data okay. goes to the server with as as a request body. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, so what I do now is I'm creating a new method to create. So what should be the the, met, the definition of this or what should be the name? Post. Okay, post, self, self will anyway be there. Okay, now before I, you know, go into this, I will have first have to make you understand what are we going to use next, right? Let us understand why, I mean, what are we do, trying to do now? Okay, so when we when we are trying to send some data to the server, the data I mean using the post method, the data goes as request body. Okay, but how is the server know that is the application that we are creating? How will it know that you have to take data from the request body? Right. So for example, I want to log in onto a form. Right. So the login has username, password, and things like that. How, where is this data going? This data is going to the server in request body. Okay. Now request reach server. How will server know to look at a request body to get the data? Right. So for that, some arrangement has to be made because what is this actually? What are we creating in app.py? The server code. This is a server code. How we will how will under, how will server understand to look at request body to get data? Right. So for that, there is something called as a request parser. Okay, so that will make use of it now. And that has to be imported because we're using, so that is called as actually, I mean, in uh, class, actually it's called as rec parse. Okay, it stands for request parsing. All right, and request parsing, we are assuming, okay, so some assumptions have to be made. So assumptions as in, what should be the data that the server should look? What data server should look, all right? So first thing is, first thing is we have to tell the server that you have to look for some data in the request body. This is the first thing. And the second thing is we have to specify what data you should look for. Are you getting this thing? These two things. So when you make a request using post method, the data goes to the server you in the request body. This is the first argument. The second thing is if this data is coming to the server in a request body, there are two things that have to be taken care of. One is the server should know that the data is there in request body, right? And second thing, what is that data? Okay. So to make sure that the server knows that the data is there in the request body, we are using request parser. Okay. And to make sure what data the server should know that is done with the help of defining arguments. Okay. We'll make use of same rec parse. Okay, so we'll define arguments here. That can be done anywhere. I mean, within within the uh, this also, but we'll do it here. Okay, just about the class. Okay, so for that we'll first make a variable called as parser. Okay, so it is actually rec parse dot 
request parser so you don't have to worry about this this is some you know some uh, what we call default code that we need to actually get these things working all right so first we created parser and then we'll start adding argument so which what are what is the data you, data you should look for so just uh, uh, something so you are saying that data is that we are sending via post and that is going to the server and request body and the server has to know the data and for that we are using request parser but they were, you said that there are two things that uh, uh, the data is there and there is something else also about that data yeah so i mean first thing is there is a data okay i mean first mm -hmm. thing is the uh, the acknowledgement that or the idea that the server should look at data in request body i mean unless i know where the data is kept where how will i look and where will i look right so first thing the server should look at now there can be multiple data at the server body but what data to look at what are the fields that you have to look at what column you have to look at for example in the request body i'm sending username and password and email all right but what data should the uh, and and there is only the requirement of username and password so the server should know right that i have to look at username and password only so these are called as arguments that you have to look at in the request body whenever you receive a request all right and that is done by this parser which i have created all right so this is where you define what arguments you have to look at and then later we'll use it okay so first i'm just uh, look at this what i'm doing parser dot add argument okay. and argument and what is this what is that argument this argument we need only one thing right name I mean, for example, what are we doing here in post method for material? We're creating a new material, right? There are two things, ID and name. ID, it is our auto-incremented primary key. So we do not need ID. What do we need? Name, that's all. So this is the only argument that the server should look for, right? Are you getting this? So that's all. So you add this parser dot add argument and name. Okay, you can name it anything you want. Material name, this name, that name, but okay, name. All right. Now, now, this argument has to be used within this uh, post request. I mean, this post div method. Okay. So that is used using parser. I mean, parse args. That is another method. So there are certain method that require rec parse provides you. First thing to create this parser object, right? Then object has one method to add argument and another method to retrieve argument. Okay. So that is done within the this uh, definition of our post. All right, so I'll just write args equals to parser dot parse args. That's all. Okay, parser dot parse args. This means when I write now, when I this args will have a dictionary that is that JSON in the form of arguments that we have created. Okay, so let me show you what it will get. We will send data something like this name uh good okay so we'll send data something like this because that's all we need right so when i send data something like this later on this args will have that same data so this args will become a dictionary which will have value something like this Whatever I send comes here. Now that ours is defined here, I can use, make use of that ours, uh, that value wherever I want, right? So assume that ours is here and it has value something like this. So how do I make use to make a new object in the database? Okay, I'm just saying that assume. I will just remove this because ours internally has this when I use this, right? So it internally has this. So how do I make use of uh, this ours to create a new object in my database i write new underscore material a new underscore mat how do we create new object material name equals to args name because this is how you retrieve a value from a dictionary right so if you want wood to be put here what will you do args what a name right key name so you whatever word whatever value is there will be assigned to this 
right once you are done with this what do you do you do that uh, again tradition db dot session and the commit okay once it is done you don't have to do anything right the post work is done functionality is done but if i just want an you know but later on i want a feedback that uh, okay something is added or not so what will i return a json feedback okay or even i don't need to put that i can simply return a string that will be uh, sufficient right added successfully all right and there is one more thing so when you return anything as a string or json i mean you can return either a single string or the entire json right so here we have returned entire json here we are just returning single string okay now every successful operation in the you know in the web by default has 200 okay status code right but in general when you create a new resource in database i am talking about conventions now right conventionally when you create a new resource in the database wherever you should return 201 status code okay this gives you an idea that 201 means it is created the resource is created even if you look in the web 201 status code stands for a resource created all right and when i do it as comma separated that is this uh, message and this comma separated by 201 instead of returning 200 status code it will return 201 status code okay and which is intuitive right so when i want to retrieve it is retrieved successfully 200 okay when i want to create something it is created successfully therefore 201 okay is this clear so i'll just remove this ars document uh, this uh, dictionary here and keep everything as is okay so this is where you create the argument that the server should look for in the request body and this is how you use that argument okay in the method okay server code Is this clear? Now let us test this. Let us save it. Okay, so when I save it, it is restarting. Okay, everything is fine. Let me go back to my Thunder client. So I'll go to my Thunder client new request. All right, and now I have to provide data to my this thing, right? Post. Now there is another thing that I did not do. What did I not do? Uh, where is this? App dot py. What is the what is the I mean what is the sequence? You define class, you define methods, you define functionality, and define routes, right? So routing I did not do. So here the method is defined, that is fine. But here I should define route. What will I do? Slash API slash eight. And the data what should be created with actually going as request body. So you don't have, don't have to do anything, right? Slash API slash create. That's all. and this has to be comma separated so every route that you provide because your the method itself says that you are adding a resource so all the resources have to be added comma separated okay so once you save this okay now let us go to our thunder client so it will be slash api slash create how do we make request is what i am saying right so slash api slash create url what should be the method post and in the request body we'll type in the json okay so it should be name colon post okay make sure that whatever argument you have created whatever argument you have created here name exactly that has to be provided in the request see name okay no upper case no lower case if there is lower case create lower case here okay there is one thing to note here subtle differences i mentioned right so in the i mean while creating argument i have given single quotes it has nothing to do with dictionary or something like that but in the json i am giving double quotes json always take double quotes all right single quote will have no meaning in json sir where right? did you get this sorry double quotes where did you get this in the code where did i we did we give this double quotes no, in see, json in the dictionary we are creating right everywhere i am giving single quote while creating the dictionary but if you if you see the request sorry if you here if you see this material id this material name this mate all material everything i have given single quotes you could have given double quotes no mm. issues with that mm. you can give single quote double quote no issues in python right because both have same meaning but when you see the output 
you see that everything is coming in double quotes yes. so a valid json has everything in double quotes okay. right this means when i'm sending a data in json i should make sure that it is a valid json therefore i'm putting double quotes here okay okay so should i make request okay so we have created url we have specified method and then we have added also the data all right let me make sure send okay so you can see whatever what is returned as the response whatever i wanted to return and also make sure that uh, i mean you uh, note the status 201 created i never mentioned that i'm using 201 for creating it is by default a uh, web uh, convention all right 201 is something that is uh, used for some resource getting created in the database so how would the return we 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 did that right added successfully 201 we wrote that yes right? yes that's why it is giving us this as uh, feedback right so ultimately what is happening whatever i return will come as the output of that api right internally what it does we will check from the get right because according to us this post should add a new entry in the database right so how do we check this with the help of get sir did you do that api add resource uh, this uh, create thing like the yeah. the url yeah see okay okay i didn't see that right i mean unless i do how will it understand right so see this is the new uh, other get method okay if the resource is successfully added i should be able to see that word here right let me uh, do that right so you can see word material 4 right so inherently if you see whether we are using controller or whether we are using api inherently we are using the same sql command uh, that uh, flask sql commands only See, but how does it know that we have to use uh, the like the post method? Like API create will do post and I the, I the specified process. the method also, right? See post. Okay. No, no, that but, is the that is the best thing of this thunder client, right? You specify the okay. method, you specify the URL, and then you send. So this is the get method. See get API all materials. This is get method. this is post method see api create post and i know that uh, the if i am creating something the data should go as request body therefore i have added body right and this is the response that i get from the again in the response you'll see it is application json only right and uh, uh, the status code is 201 right so there are two forms uh, sorry two things that you can return one is the string json and also the status code what should we get return right you can change it to anything you want for example if i even to 404 all that should not make sense 404 is for not found but it will still return that okay so let us add one more thing new request okay new request i'll just change this to uh gold so i'm getting errors uh, unsupported media type we'll see okay so when i do post method with gold and i send you see you get 404 not found does that make i mean does that mean your there is some issue no this is this will return whatever you want it to return okay but if you do the get send you will see that the gold is added successfully all right but the conventionally what do we use we use 201 so we'll go back to our app.py and change this to 201 Okay, save it. So now we have. If anything goes wrong, is it a syntax, sir? Like to, we have to give that error code. Two zero one. If you don't give comma on two zero one, if you don't give what will happen? It will give two hundred. Okay. So that's what I said, right? By default, every successful operation will return two hundred. Okay. 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 But two hundred. Okay. For get also two hundred. Okay. For post also. right so there has to be some differentiation right and with the post you are explicitly adding something to the database that is you are using i mean you are creating something in the database so it is intuitive to give 201 okay sir okay uh excuse right, me so uh, yeah just stop sharing for a minute uh, how do okay, how okay, do first i take, first just one question hmm. uh, how do i change the message associated with 200 so instead of 200 okay if i want 200 created how do i do that or any other no, no no those are those are uh, implicitly defined by the http so those cannot be changed those cannot be changed they have their uh, literal meaning right 
But yes, I understand can... the reason I'm asking is because in the graded assignment, uh, the they actually asked us to change some of those things. So no, no. What they have asked is this. Uh, let me go back here. This response. Okay. 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 All right. So basically, how do you do that? Whatever they have asked, uh, app.py, whatever they have asked has to go as a return statement along with the status quo. Okay. All right. And let uh, us say in, in case of error, I mean, uh, I actually want to uh, see uh, uh, there are scenarios where uh, the course ID and the, I mean, let's say there are two parameters being passed and one of them is wrong. So you want to specifically say which one is wrong. In that case, how do I pass that as an error message, part of the error message? Do I need to construct it and send it? You can use if else. Okay. Right. So, I mean, you can do something like this. I'll just show you here. For example, now I hope you understood that how we are taking the data, right? So let's say I have args. All right. One is, uh, let's say, roll number. This is how you take this is how you take roll number. Similarly, this uh, this you you will take a name, I guess, something like this. All right. So these are the two things. Yeah, and both are mandatory. Both are mandatory. So what you'll do, right? If args roll number. Equals to well, or uh, is none, right? No. Uh, it depends on, I mean, what data we are taking. For example, if it is an empty string, then you return. Uh, uh, I mean, what is the state? Roll number not there. Roll number absent. Got it. Okay. And then you return the status code, whatever it says, I guess 400. I guess. Yeah, four, yeah 400. Correct. Right. And then yeah. else, okay. oh, sorry, if else, if not else, if elif, this is Python, elif. right? args uh, name equals to uh, empty string, you return name absent 400 and then else everything working fine 200. So I actually have two follow up questions. Can I ask it now? Yeah, yeah, quite. Okay. So what if, see here it is very simple, right? There are only two arguments, but what if I have a payload that has 40 arguments? I can't be doing an if else. And what if I want to send the payload back to uh, the, uh, as a part of the response in case of an error, how do I do that? And second for graded assignments, do we need to check for all error inputs, all input errors? Because uh, let's say the, payload doesn't have that has a roll number, but doesn't have name, hmm. the complete thing. So do are, are we expected to check for all scenarios? Yeah. I mean, wherever you, uh, I mean, wherever it has uh, given, see, generally these things will come when there is a request body. Okay. I mean, whenever yeah. you're sending data as request body. So in post, there's always a request body, right? I mean, at least the assignments. Uh, no, but see, for example, in our case, when we, when generally, when the request method is post, in that case, we are expecting request body, post or put. In case of delete and get, we are not, right? So in case of post or put, there is a request body. And generally, uh, you have to first check the request body is uh, right or not. Unless it, unless that has happened, it will either, uh, you know, give you the uh, status code as bad request or 400. No, so, okay, so if, if you take your example of material and all, hmm. and, and let's look at the post method, right? Now, and let's go to uh, Thunder and actually run it. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the, you no, know, uh, Thunder, what is it? Yeah. Here in the post one, let's say I don't, I don't have gold. I only written mm -hmm. name, right? So then I have to capture it as an error, correct? Yes. Because, okay. Second is, <laughs> let us say instead of name, there is some other value. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does not value the uh, literal. It's not name. Let's say it's NAM. A typo is there. Hmm. Okay. In that case, also I have to capture it as an error because yes. the argument has not been passed. Yes. And is the error message for all of them the same that is expected? 
Yes, because it's not code. very clearly articulated in the question. No, no, so bad code. If there is any issue with the request, it has to be a bad code. That's all. Okay. So I am getting like when when I was uh, I I was sending this request to this uh, endpoint API create. Mm -hmm. So when I was not I was I didn't see that you had typed this earlier. So uh, when I did that, I was getting this unsupported media type, and then when I typed wrongly, I was uh, getting bad request error. Mm, bad request. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And my first okay, so, question is about uh, how do I pass the payload back in the response in case of an error? Huh. So what you can do is the payload that we are getting is actually the the request that we have got here, right? Arcs. So yes. you simply return arcs. No, no. I want to give a message and arcs both. Message and arcs. Okay. Yeah, I so want to say you hey, give there a is a something wrong. You, yeah, yeah. You give a JSON. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, so you construct a JSON response and then add the status code after that, I guess. Yeah. Or you can simply add something like this. I mean, you know, there is something wrong. So you can directly say, give the status code as that 400. But will this status code be interpreted as the HTTP status code? OK. So for in no, that right. case, you do this. Comma 400. OK. Because that was another thing, uh, which is there are HTTP status codes, and you may want to send out a specific status code or error code internally. Yeah, okay. Right. So these are uh, uh, interpreted as HTTP status code. But okay. if there is any specific error code, that, right? If you see in the question statement that are there are error codes. Yeah. Right? I, I don't uh, recall those codes exactly. Yeah, yeah, there are. Enro enrollment zero one and all of that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So those can be sent as these strings. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. No, no, this is very helpful. I okay, all right. So we will uh, remove this. Uh, sure, but wouldn't this uh, give this uh, even when we do not have any error? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. I just. I was just giving the you know answer for uh, the question. Otherwise, we will write if and else condition and then return accordingly. So this was the original. Okay, clear. Yeah, so uh, somebody was having error. I will just stop sharing. Is the error sorted or it's still there? So that error, I just that now, I, I didn't see that you were actually writing uh, in that JSON request when you were oh, doing so post. I didn't see that, and therefore I was getting that unsupported media type because I was just sending blank mm. request body to the server. That's what. So, uh, I mean, see, we now let me go back to that. My code here, we are telling that expect an argument. Okay, and there is no argument. It will definitely throw error. So also, when I'm trying to add, do that same thing again. So, like you added code or wood. So, if we try to do that again, we get internal server error because we have that yes. unique constraint and that. Yes, 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 definitely. You'll get that. Okay, you can deal with it. But uh, I mean, because our model is having a unique as a constraint, let's not add uh, every time add a new thing. Right. So this controller is not just, you know, simply add without checking. You can have a lot of validations. Check whether this is there or not. If it is there, show another error. If it is not there, then you add. The same thing what we did in, you know, validation, uh, sorry, uh, authentication we created, right? Login and register form. So while logging in while registering we took first whether the username is right or not whether the password is right or not while verifying authenticating we check that okay is the username provided correct is the user existing in the database or not after it is existing then you check whether the password is correct or not so all those things all those validations are written within flask only right within the controller we are simply assuming that everything is correct and writing according to it Right, but in case of uh, in case of actual condition, you'll have to see. I mean, write lot of ifs. 
sir you you're saying that flask is handling most, like we we have only defined right which material is going to have what like this material id is going to be this all this we have defined right what yeah, is yeah, yes. this you are saying that flask is also doing something flask is also doing something no not flask flask sql alchemy is making sure that you don't give anything extra uh, sorry okay. same as per the model yes because we are importing the class in that uh, this uh, material and item we are yeah, yeah. we are referring to the yeah. same class right so it doesn't matter you go with uh, mm -hmm. you know the interface or the api the the constraints will still hold sir so also this uh, like uh, when we were doing with that uh, without the api when we were seeing things we were linking the url to the specific uh, method get or mm -hmm. post right so if on the same url we had got get or post method accordingly we have, we were entering something mm. right but then here we have this uh, add api dot add resource material api then we have two different urls mm. and we are referring to the same class material api and then there are two different methods get and post mm. so why like do do we not have like the same uh, url and then according to the method we are choosing the the method of that material api class yeah so that's what so th this is the way of coding that we are using in flask restful this is one thing and secondly what it does is so does this endpoint take any argument dynamic argument does it take it is not taking anything no does this take no no and is any one of our methods get and post taking any argument the like post is but no no argument an argument see gen, when i provide argument i mean in flask what we did what we did for example the url any, itself like right, converters so there is any argument in the endpoint that argument has to be provided as argument of function yes yeah, so using those flask converters and... uh, right but here same thing similarly if i have there is no argument in the endpoint and no argument here in any of the methods i mean you're getting no this there is no arguments hmm. what does that mean this all material is linked with or mapped with both the methods because the nature hmm. of this method is not to take argument and the nature of this endpoint is not to take argument so if this hmm. nature is matching then it is getting mapped with both similarly this api slash create is getting mapped with both Although we are using this to post and using this to get, right? In any way, I have never mentioned use this for get and use this for post. Yes, sir. So that. that is what I'm saying. Like, if if I if I do that in the new request, if I do API all all materials and I do post, it will still it will still uh, work. It will still work, right? So, uh, just to for my clarification, this uh, comparison that happens, right? Hmm. API all materials API create hmm. with the mm, okay with with the string right how does it so that's a literal comparison right and except for the parameters when they are passed yes okay so basically this string is a constant string right it is hard coded what does that mean this endpoint doesn't take any argument so this will be mapped with every function that does not take any argument. Okay, internally it causes some confusion, but externally, what will you release? What what will be the documentation say? Uh, post, and then you use this URL. So if I say this, there won't be anyone who's using this same URL for any other method, right? What am I releasing to the to the users? Okay, the in the documentation for the API, I'll say that use this. Although yes, if they were to use the same thing, yeah, will, but for that work, they should yeah. know the code which they want, mm -hmm. right? They want. So, so, but as a, as a developer of the code, we need to make sure that these are the these result to unique. Yeah. So, as a developer, we should ha therefore create this intuitive APIs. I mean, intuitive uh, endpoints, yeah, yeah. and they need to be distinct for sure. Right. Because see, when I say, I mean, as a developer, I would say that okay, this does not take any argument; it gets connected to the both. But then all materials is, I understand, okay, it should give all material, retrieve all the material. But 
for any reason i don't have any or i don't have any reason to understand that all material can also be used to post right as a user so therefore what we do as developers we create intuitive apis sorry intuitive endpoints which when we release should make sense because now as a user you'll only see this so yeah you understand okay it is slash create therefore it is post yes it is all material therefore it is get so if i try to understand what this means is i am trying to get all materials using api i am trying to create a new resource using post using this api all right so actually the users will not get confused because you are giving them the documentation of api okay you just don't give them the code okay and uh, application users will anyway never get confused because they can click only if there is a button they can see only if there is a they can add information only if there is a form right and they are internally linked by the developers are you getting this so yeah there is this confusion that okay where, how do we know which method to get map you don't have to you don't have to create that confusion because ultimately you are the developer and you will give the documentation to the users so once the documentation is set something like this there is no question of confusion whether this will be mapped to this or this will be mapped to that getting clear no okay so uh, shall we very quickly create the update and delete yeah go ahead if there is any doubt go ahead please was somebody speaking is there anything in chat So the know, API documentation is for the developers and users will anyway do not know what is happening because they are just going to use the UI. UI for the application, API documentation is for the users. API documentation is created by developer. See, as a developer, there is a confusion which will link to what. Okay, as a developer, you might have this confusion, but as a user, if I release this, if the developer itself releases this. will there be any confusion to the user uh, i mean why will i use api slash create with get why will i do that like as a user so there are like developers who create the api and there are developers who use the api so the users of the api we are seeing mm -hmm. users so of the api will get the documentation what does documentation mean use this api with post method and this is what you get i mean if you For example, okay, let's go to that uh, swagger thing. The so, suppose, uh, suppose uh, if I am doing like if I am scraping the web and I am scraping or uh, using an API, then I am the user, right? Yes. Even if you want to create a application from any else, any other API, you are the user, consumer of the API. So, what will you refer to? How will you know? How do I use this API from the documentation? and why would you think after i mean apart from the documentation why would you mix up the method and endpoints right okay i'll i'll just show you let us go to the created assignment no not the created lab assignment okay so link for lab assignment so this opens a swagger documentation for you what does that mean this is something if i want to use this api is this is the documentation what does that mean if i use this api with get method this is what i'll get if i use this uh, resource with put method this is what i get why will i use api slash course slash course id with get right this is what we are trying to say if it uh, is I'm, defined it is defined uh, i'm glad you opened this uh, hmm. so if you look at this 404 it says course not found hmm. so this will show up on the screen right not next yes. to 404 no 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 this is your status code which will anyway mean 404 not found but uh, what is this this is the actual response the written statement that uh, you written. that's okay. what i was saying yeah okay no got it this is where i got confused because the font that has been used to describe it here if you look at how it actually comes up in the response hmm. it, it uh, okay now now it's clear further more clear thanks okay all right so now if you see this is these are two different endpoints right API student student ID. This takes an argument, an API student. This does not take an argument. I have defined that use this with delete, use this with post. 
why would I use this with delete and use this with post? I mean, why will I interchange? If the document say, documentation says this, use it, right? Yeah, so there won't be any confusion for the consumers of the API and uh, developers anyway know things, right? Clear? Hmm. Are you getting? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you go through it and uh, uh, I mean this what we add now will help you to understand the documentation. All right. So this is my documentation. That's all. This is the documentation of the API I have created today. Right. So you use this with post, use this with get. Nobody will ha ever have any confusion. Right. The consumers. But as a developer, I know that, okay, all these are intermapped. API create I can use for get post. All materials I can use for get post. Doesn't matter no? unless it throws error, unless it th shows inconsistency. It's not that all material will sometime add and sometime cre uh, create and sometime show. That won't happen, right? That is pretty clear. So you don't have to worry about if there is any inconsistency, th then there is a you know a problem of, uh, then there is a matter to think about. But you will never have inconsistency. If you go to this method and write get, you'll always uh, retrieve. If you go to this method and write post, you'll always create. So there's no confusion. All right, so now we will uh, write very quickly for delete and update. Okay, so first we'll do for update. For update, we'll use put. Okay, so there is no up update HTTP method as such. Okay, so self, everything is fine. Okay, but the problem is, again, so same thing that, uh, the same problem that arose yesterday. How do you know what to update? How do you know what to delete? So for that, you need to provide an argument for this, right? So this will be something like this. So you self will be anyway there because it is a method class method. So self will be there, but ID is something that you provide, right? So you first retrieve that element, then update. Okay. So I'll write the, uh, I mean, the, what we call the actual logic for this later, but how will you link it with the endpoint? What endpoint should I mention here? ID should be provided at the end okay? Yes, right. So how can mm -hmm. I do? Let's say slash API slash, slash converter ID integer yes. slash update. All right, and what should be updated with? That should that can go as a request body, right? That will go as request body. Okay, and the same argument I'll be using because if I'm updating uh, any you know object of material API, what can I update? Only the name. Therefore, I don't need to add any other argument. The same argument can be used. How do I use the same argument? First, I'll get the object. Okay, from the database. So I'll write two underscore update. Okay, I'm I know that I'm be querying only the material table or material class query dot get and id okay so we are updating and not deleting yes we are updating what happened we are updating no i thought we were going to delete yeah. no 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 i've written update here right i've used put put as an http verb that you generally use for update conventionally you use it for updating certain things Okay, so to update material dot query dot get ID. So first you get that particular element or object that you want to update. All right, then you get the arguments, all the required argument that goes on with the request body. So it will be same thing parser dot parsers. Okay, so this R's is basically that same dictionary name equals to whatever. All right, and now how, what do you update? So I'll write to update, what will you update? Dot name equals to with what? Args. Right, so to update is an object, dot name is its value attribute of the name. Sorry, name attributes value that has to be updated with whatever dictionary you're receiving with this. Okay, so it is ours name, whatever you provide as the request body will get come here. And once you want to commit the changes, it will be db dot session dot commit. Okay. 
except reading everything will require this db.session.commit okay and once this is done what do you do you return the uh, uh, you know initiative message okay update it successfully and we will not return anything because it is okay uh, uh, an operation that should return 200 okay so leave it all right i mean we don't have something like uh, up, you know updated okay so we'll leave it as is this is what we need okay so see first we have made sure of id so id has to be provided and that will go with endpoint all right so that we have used here okay then the argument with what we have to update that should go with the request body so for that we are using args and then these two things are something that we have seen in flask sql help okay let's save this Okay, so now let us try to, okay, same page only it is. Let us try to update something. So what will I do? I'll first change the method to put. Okay, and then I know that API, let's say to slash update. This is my endpoint, right? And here I'll provide what I want to update it with. So what is the, it is actually aluminum. Let me reload. Aluminum, right? So we'll update it with box eight. Where am I writing? Oxide, right? So when you send this, it will do something and it says updated successfully. Okay, how do we check this? We go to one of our get and then do the get method. So you can see that is updated to boxite. All Getting right, so internal server. Yeah, yeah, I will come to that. So the, the, the ID is provided by endpoint, right? What to update and the actual data is provided by request body. So these are the two uh, ways in the, in which this particular endpoint or API is taking data, right? So ID is coming via the endpoint and the data is coming via the request body. Okay. All right. So yeah, you can share your screen and stop for very, I'll stop my sharing. You can share your screen and show. Hello. Should I started sharing. Can okay. Fine, fine. Yeah, it's coming up. So let me just increase the size of this. Okay. So this is the code. Right? And when I'm doing this. Request. Okay. Parser. It's go to go to your code. Okay. Line number. Line number. Thirty-eight. It is parser dot parse underscore arcs, not dot arcs. Okay, okay, okay. Save it. You'll have to, yeah. Now check. Yeah, it happened. Okay. Okay. Anybody else having issue? Okay. So with that done, let us very quickly do delete. Okay. I'll share. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, uh, should I should I write any? I mean, do I need to write any uh, extra endpoint to delete? Technically, as Flask RESTful is working, do I need to write any extra endpoint to delete uh, the resource? Okay. So let me first write. So we'll write delete because delete is a defined HTTP verb. So it will be self comma id and then we'll write the code for it okay but do i need to write anything extra to actually delete apart from this are you getting my question update the update portion can be replaced by delete yes that is something that we'll do but technically do i need to add any extra endpoint for that for deleting no 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 right so i hope you're getting this because see I, this endpoint takes one id this means it is getting mapped with this this particular endpoint it is automatically getting mapped okay right. so even if i do a api slash end slash update but i change the request method to post i mean something like this uh, sorry delete still it will delete for me okay but then it is an i mean 
very inconsistent to read and explain right so therefore i'll add uh, a new endpoint which is very similar to this update thing but i'll replace it with delete okay api slash int id delete now let us write the code for deleting so code for deleting is pretty easy right first you retrieve so to similarly i retrieve the resource similar to that i'll update uh, retrieve the resource to delete so i'll write it to delete okay once the resource is deleted you don't need any data to be sent because you retrieve the resource from the database and that resource has to be deleted that's all so what we'll do db dot session dot delete and then you add that object to delete and then commit because every change in the database will require commit okay once that is done then you return it is successfully right so this is how you delete now when we save this so you can see that now there is no need to send any data as a request body you can simply send the data with api because you only need to retrieve the object from database that you want to delete right that's all so we'll uh, i think if i save this it is running yeah so it is running I go back to my new request all right and since there is i mean it will doesn't matter if you give the body doesn't matter but it is okay to remove the body okay what will i do i do delete and then i know that it is delete so we'll this is will this will be my endpoint the actual url to uh, delete some resource from the api from the database and this will be my request method all right let us delete the last one i think 5 is the last one yes okay let us delete gold okay so when i do that let's see it says it says deleted successfully how do i check i go back to my get api i mean all the recent will come here right you go to get api and send and you will see that the gold is gone okay so my delete is working fine so now i can create the documentation what will be my documentation in documentation you write something like this So now this is my documentation. When you do post, you use this endpoint. When you use get, you use this endpoint. When you use put, you use this endpoint and delete this endpoint. No confusion at all. Although I know that there is some you know interchanging happening there, but for the users or the consumers of the API, there is no confusion. This is straightforward connection between the method and endpoint to use. Okay. So we can also create YAML for this. We won't go into that for now. But I'll create an YAML and share it with the code. okay you don't need to create yaml anytime so that's okay you can very well show your apis using this thunder client it gives you a very good interface all right clear any issue till this point so i hope you understood why we are using api and how we are creating api resources okay yeah somebody speaking go ahead so one query hmm. uh good afternoon so um uh, if someone doesn't know like in a real world the api id or the last number in the database is there is it possible that someone writes aluminium and uh, sends a query and in the database side just like in sql we should write as something and query and return back the material id and then someone can choose to read it uh, yeah, is yeah, that sure. possible the two and four possible or it's only only one way like you do one thing as two is two and four also possible Yeah, yeah. Anything is possible. You just have to code it accordingly. See, what I'm taking here, ID, right? What should I take otherwise? Let's say I take name. Okay, so here I'll have to change uh, this because the name is not string. I have to provide string. Okay, so these are the two changes that I have to make. Now, 
how will i retrieve this if id is primary key then i will retrieve by get method but now i am not using primary key so what will i use filter by name equals to name so this name is this name okay and this name is the database name okay and then you get the first one can you delete okay now let us try to delete with this method okay so i need to know where is there okay plastic iron wood so wood is there right let us delete with that so i'll go to new request okay then here instead of five i'll write wood okay so now i'm deleting with the name okay let us send and see some error let us check that error what the error is app dot p no can terminal okay got an unexpected argument id where is that happening oh string and the name what we are providing right okay so you will have to rerun because oh it started let us go back to new request and now do it right delete it successfully you can check it go to get all materials and the wood is gone okay thank you sir okay so basically if you are why we are doing that with id because just to show it becomes easier to show but uh, uh, i mean you can retrieve the data with any attribute and then perform action on that object right so if you see app.py in update uh, in update i am retrieving by get uh, id and now in the delete i am uh, retrieving by the name okay so but the the way of coding changes and what is the change here you use filter by here you use get okay subtle differences but still it can be done so had there been more attributes like uh, cost quantity right price everything that can be added here and then you filter by that and then you can delete or whatever you want to do all right so i yeah good that you asked i showed that with that also so now you know two different types right okay yeah. fine okay so this is what i wanted to give today any query till now so in the filter by that the name is equals to name uh, there we can also use all the regular expressions are valid about that right? yeah 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 yes it is valid so for example we are using name and we are providing wood right so this what if i provide wood with small w how do you make sure it will not show the right entry so you can make some changes here capitalize the name and then make sure that it is added so i, I mean this is rhs right you can add whatever you want in the rhs okay now okay so have a look at this this is how you create uh, the resources uh, so i hope you understood the difference between what we are doing with flask and what we are doing with flask restful right so in the get you are getting a uh, let me go to get yeah so get you are getting actual output with uh, a json which is a raw data right in later sessions if the time permits we'll see how to use this raw data into your actual flask application okay okay so now consider the scenario that you have apis are already there documentation is already there but then how do you use it and create a flask application of your own all right so that we'll see sometime later okay any query till this point when is your next session sir my next session is on on saturday next saturday okay but week 7 we won't be covering that other part i said i'll do it with the time permits okay because week 7 will cover week 7 content okay at this point until week 6 you should be able to create these resources we are not really worried about how to use the resources okay therefore our objective is to understand how to create resources so for example you are creating your application also the project you should be able to create apis for the project okay we are not really worried about how to use those resources okay so therefore we are uh, really not putting it into uh, uh, the sequence here but if the time permits we'll definitely have a session on that 
sir uh, in the and yes if the not even if the time permits there is uh, there is a content called as uh, week uh, in week 10 when we will do testing there we'll create test cases for testing flask application so there i'll tell you how to use uh, api sir uh, in the methods like we are using get post put delete mm -hmm. uh they can we use the multiple times basis the kind of parameters they are getting no once uh, get can be used only once post can be used only once you will have to again define a class okay so again define a class and then that will be different yes so like, you can uh, do huh, yeah those are urls will be different right yes urls will be different so see there will be two things you'll do right one thing is to define a new class hmm okay second thing you will add another resource because the class changes right so the uh, name of the resource may not be api now it will may be something else or is it that is that api method still there which we api are method right, method? we are we are doing api uh, slash all materials so this api dot add resource is is a normal function right it is not related to this api or in the urls which we will generate for the other class we can still we still have to write api to no no you don't have to that's what i said this hmm. api slash api i mean slash api is not at all necessary hmm. but we are using it in a convention because see when you create documentation it becomes easier to read right this yes, is an sir. api for create api hmm. for get something like that so the whole okay. idea for adding api is to get an intuitive endpoint which shows the user that okay i'm talking about an api endpoint not a flask endpoint so for example this same like coming back to the same example google maps so google map has its own application and also the api right so there are two different ways in which it provides uh, information to you okay then how does the user differentiate between uh, uh, you know the gen normal url or api url have this convention of api right so that is the idea otherwise you can remove api from here also it will still work getting no sir so, so, but like uh, when we are having these different classes material for example we have like item api or something right so can we also make the url a little different so that we we know like if we want to create the create an item right instead of having so can we like also have something like that so first we'll create uh, first we'll create class for item okay so i'll write item api again this api that i'm adding only because i'm creating an api that's all otherwise you can create any class you want name hmm. can be anything you want right so it inherit it inherits class resource then you'll write the code for this okay so all the classes get i mean def get def post all will be there then you will add here the resource api dot add resource and then you will provide that api so it will be item api okay and then it can be comma separate so you can be either slash api slash all underscore items or it can be something like this also slash all underscore items you don't have to necessarily add api so like if i want to have this uh, create a functionality and for that i need, want to use a url so i can give any url so maybe i can give all items slash create yeah anything anything slash okay. create slash abc anything mm -hmm. okay. unless it takes uh, the argument right and that argument position also can be anywhere i've used in between api and update you can start in between in, in the start also right how do you want to structure endpoint is up to you anything you can add sir can we like uh, have this uh, id part at the end as well yeah sorry still work See what are you doing? What are you telling? This yeah, you, complete string takes an argument. Doesn't matter where it takes the argument. Okay. Anything apart from this angle bracket is just for the user to understand the endpoint, right? The code, I mean, Flask RESTful internally does not have to do anything with what you're writing here. You can instead of writing update, you can write my name also. It will still update for you. you getting 
so the the what we call the the hard coded part are just for the users to understand because we will create documentation based on that so intuitive endpoints are therefore uh, there but what does uh, the function understand whether it takes an argument or not whether it is uh, i mean it is something like this or something like this so it will map accordingly so internal mappings are so many but we need to understand that for creating documentation we need to give the method and an intuitive endpoint so the user understand okay this is what i'm doing so this is english only for users okay this is not python did you get sir in the documentation is just uh, for so that people are able to understand it properly yes yes see because this is not an application right when i'm creating an application i know the okay this is the interface i click here i go there i click there i go there this is for my need to add data so user inter i mean by looking at the interface only understands but when you have api when you have url what how do you understand that okay i need to provide data with this api i need to use get method with this api how do you know for that you give documentation okay so every api will also have documentation along with it it is a must how will you understand how will users understand what to use when to use so if the order is changed if you go on the line above hmm. the all and create and update if the order is changed and suppose doesn't matter create, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. No. it's not like in the order in which the code is written this should be the same order no 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 have it here no issues okay code does not matter uh, order does not matter okay yeah okay then any other doubt i mean i'll just keep it uh, in the same way for you to understand because this is the order that we have created code okay but it is also important to understand that the order does not matter for api okay and i'll remove this because this we have not coded it right so i, I don't want you to get confused why we are having this okay this i'll keep because i want you to also understand that you know the discussion that we had i'll just write documentation and i'll comment this also so this is also be the part of the code okay is this clear yeah now now it's clear sir earlier i was thinking that uh, put and delete and post and those are mapped to the order in which those are printed there those are type no 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 doesn't matter see if the if the method does not take any argument it will get mapped to every endpoint that does not take argument right okay all right then uh, shall we stop it here then yes sir thank you yeah, uh, thank you yeah i have an issue with the week 6 uh, lab assignment is it okay if we discuss now yeah yeah good yeah i actually submitted the lab assignment but uh, mm. uh, i am able to pass most of the cases but only for the enrollment section i am not able to pass but i am able to work it out locally hmm okay so uh, uh, gk you can mail it to me your submission okay yes okay. i have received some other submissions also i'll go through okay. go through it and definitely reply okay sure then i will email it to you then yeah so yeah. my email id is adarsh@study.itm.ac.in yeah yeah uh, i noted it in discos i will send it to you thank okay. you okay then so with that we'll stop here i hope you understood api okay practice more so you'll get more uh, you know grasp of it and uh, lab assignments are a good way of learning okay so we'll stop it here uh, let me know if there are any doubts in on this course so apart from lab if can you give some more practice problems uh, so that we can practice more is there any website where we can create more apis just to practice uh okay uh, as of now i don't have but i can curate some questions for you and send Yes, right. so that will that will help in clearing the concept. The more we can create APIs and play around, yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, I'll I'll try to do that.
Thank you, sir. Okay, then. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, I was just saying thank you. Sir. Okay, then. All right, then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll end it here. I'll share the code and supplementary content. You'll have it there.